Well, good morning, gentlemen, ladies. Um, I'm going to start the uh, installation process of the DRO and the closing milling machine in earnest today. So I've been sort of looking around. My, my first plan was to take the table off and then remove the cross slide um, just to keep it a little bit lighter. Plus, I figured that they probably needed some cleaning under the table. I suspected that the lead screw and the nut were probably pretty jammed full of, uh, full of swarf and 50 years of goo. But I looked under there with a flashlight, I inspected it pretty good, and it's actually fairly clean. So I'm going to go ahead and try to remove the table and the cross light as one assembly. I think that'll be just easier to deal with. Um, getting the table off, uh, from what I've read, requires pulling the bearing off of one end, and I don't really want to deal with that. So <clears throat> we're just going to go ahead and take the whole thing off in one assembly. So in theory, um, it's this nut, then the handle the locking ring for the uh, dial, the dial itself, there's a bushing under there and uh, another retaining ring and then there's this housing that comes out. Once that's all loose then the entire lead screw should uh, unscrew free of the, the cross slide assembly and I'm going to go ahead and remove the gib and all the gib adjusting screws um, from the right hand side underneath the table and slide the table right off. Um, I was planning on rigging up some sort of hoisting system, and then I remembered I have one of those uh, little hydraulic lifting tables that I got from Harbor Freight, and that'll handle 500 pounds, and I think height-wise it's going to be just about the right height uh, to slide the table right onto it, so it should be pretty straightforward. So, you know, that's the plan. Um, let me just show you the front here and, and what's going on with that. So in theory, um, if you believe the parts diagram, and this parts diagram is actually two years newer than the milling machine, so I think it's probably accurate. They did make some changes to these machines over the years, um, but this one looks, you know, pretty close. Anyway, once the dial comes off, um, this should be uh, cast housing. I was looking, and I don't see any evidence of a seam. It looks like it's all one piece with the, with the knee. Um, if that's the case, then I guess I'm going to have to probably try to take the bearings out. But... We'll see. Maybe it's just crusted under 60 years worth of paint and grime and grease and, and all that stuff. Uh, once I get all the parts off, I'm going to soak them in some, uh, some solvent. I'll show you what I'm going to use. It's really good stuff. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward. So let me start uh, loosening the screws and, and seeing what's under here. Okay, so I just backed the camera out of the way a little bit, um, just so there's less chance of me knocking it over. And... Uh, I've got this beef jerky for dogs container that I'm going to go ahead and use for all the parts and we'll put some solvent in there and uh, drop them all in there and get everything clean. So I'm going to start by taking off the dial, or taking off the crank rather. Now this machine has not been a part as far as I'm aware uh, in who knows how long, maybe 50 years, maybe more. So hopefully these fasteners aren't completely uh, jacked up and we don't run into any trouble here. I got a nice Brass hammer, nice soft brass hammer. Take the crank off. Yeah, it's a little cruddy, but not too bad. Some grime on there. We'll go ahead and degrease that. And then this is the locking ring for the dial. Got that. Off comes the dial. Oh, we got to get the. Uh, Woodruff key out of there, so let me just put the handle back on a little bit and turn that so it's facing up, so there's less chance of me dropping it and losing it. Less chance, not no chance. Now usually the best way to get these off is to just kind of tap them up. And then, uh, sometimes you got to hit them with a drift. I'm going to go ahead and grab a pair of pliers and see if I can't yank this out and fling it across the shop. All right. This I'm going to go ahead and put in the, I have a chest little uh, tool drawer here with all my taps and dies and whatnot. I'm going to put that in there just because I don't want to get that lost. I do have a whole pile of Woodruff keys, but inevitably, uh, never the right one. So that's that. So now I've got, I don't know, can you see that? Let me, uh, no, not really. Let me move the camera around the front a little bit here um, so you can get a better, a better look at what's in there. My hand's probably going to get in the way for a lot of this, but basically there's, there's three screws on this retainer here, and then there's two screws on, this, uh, on the housing, but hopefully is the housing. So I'm going to take those off first, 
and they're just flathead screws. I'd say there's a 50-50 chance these are going to be completely tight and stuck, and I'm going to have to get my impact driver out, but oh, look at that. I spoke too soon. I guess I shouldn't say anything because the rest of them could be just horrible. That one came right out. So maybe this machine's been apart, uh, you know, within recent history. I know I never took this, took this apart. Um, I was kind of neglectful. I brought this machine home. It was in pretty good shape. It had a lot of surface rust because of a miscommunication between the uh, seller and I. I ended up sitting in her driveway under a tarp uh, under the snow for about two weeks before I got it. So I did a basic, you know, quick cleanup of the rust and lubricated everything, but didn't really do a thorough job of cleaning everything. Um, I just kind of put it right to work, and it's been it's been working good. But I will I will clean as much as I can as I go along. Wow, these are coming right off. So far, so good. There's no way I'm going to stay this lucky. So there we go. And there's the last one. So now, in theory at least, this housing. Yeah, there's a seam coming up, so I would say it's definitely not all one piece. And of course, the last thing we want to do is damage this housing. Because getting a replacement. Replacement parts for these mills are either completely unobtainable. Um, if you find them used, you know, they're going to be expensive. Closing does stock a surprising number of parts for these machines still. And... Uh, Boy, get your wallet ready. I would say, you know, best guess is if Clausing had this little housing, they're going to want 400 bucks for it. So we want to be a little careful here. Um, I might actually switch to a softer hammer, maybe a lead hammer, if, I, if it doesn't start coming off a little bit easier. So I'm just pulling on the bottom, tapping on the top. And it's coming. I think I'm going to grab a little, uh, a little machinist wedge, see if I can get that in there. Before I do that, grab a little of the trusty PB Blaster, squirt that in there a little bit, maybe that'll uh, free that up. Set that aside. I can also put a little heat on this. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and Turn the camera off. You guys don't need to sit there and watch me bang on this for 10 minutes. I'll come back when that housing is off. All right, well, that literally took about two minutes. I just took a screwdriver and very gently pried in there, and now she's free. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line it up again uh, with the pins just so I don't damage anything. And now I'm going to grab uh, the Woodruff key and the crank because I'm going to need those to turn this guy here. I'm trying to re recall whether this is going to be a left-hand thread or a right-hand thread. Well, let me tap that in a little bit. <clears throat> this is the part where you use the key. All right. And that's it. So there's the lead screw. Looks like it's actually in excellent condition. Um, it's pretty well lubed. Feels like it's got some sort of grease maybe with some molybdenum, molybdenum or some graphite in there. A couple of chips on the end, but all in all, um, that's in pretty nice shape. So we're gonna go ahead and set that aside and uh, bring my lifting table over here, get the tripod out of the way. And we're gonna to attempt to slide the, actually I'm gonna take the wipers and the, and the get out first and then we're gonna slide that right off of there. All right, so I got my lifting table in place. It's a little lower than I would hope it was going to be, but I think it'll be good. I got about a foot uh, between the table, the lifting table, and the table of the mill. Um, this is what I'm using for degreasing these days from 99% of my stuff. Uh, let me zoom in there. That's this Zep heavy duty floor stripper. Uh, it comes from the local box store, you know, home center. Uh, it's 10 bucks a gallon. And I mix it up 10 to 1 with water, and it works fantastically. It cuts through 50 years of grease and grime uh, like nobody's business. Um, I, I dilute it 10 to 1, so, you know, 10 bucks gets you 10 gallons, and that lasts me a pretty long time. So 
I used to use the purple shite. Um, problem with the purple stuff is, uh, you know, it's really hard on your skin if you have a slightest cut or anything. <clears throat> it just burns like hell. Um, it attacks aluminum. It removes paint. This stuff is great. It doesn't hurt your hands. It's pretty easy on your skin. It doesn't seem to bother aluminum. Um, if you don't leave it on, you know, for hours and hours, um, it doesn't seem to bother the paint very much either. So I really like it, and uh, it's just about all I use. So pardon the mess. I probably should have moved that shop vac and all that crap out of the way. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I've got the the, um, the gib adjustment screws all removed. I didn't show that. They're just screws. Uh, tell you, whoever designed this mill really wanted to have those gibs in completely perfect adjustment at all times. Um, across the six inch table, uh, there's five gib screws plus the lock. And then uh, <laughs> there's, I guess, a 10 on the front and another 10 on the knee. So they went pretty hog wild. So. All right, well, here goes nothing. I probably should remove the handles off the end of this, but I'm going to live dangerously. So I'm going to slide this over a little bit. What am I hitting on? I'm hitting on the nut, I guess. Well, I must be hitting on the nut. Oh, that one's pretty great. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess I'm either going to have to take the table off and take that nut off. I think what I'm going to try to do is knock the gib out and see if I can just uh, lift it off of the dovetail. Um, hopefully, there's clearance to do that. I know, uh, like the Atlas lathes, uh, they, when, when you remove the gib, there's enough room to clear the dovetail and lift straight up. So let me go ahead and, uh, and do that. But let's see what I can do here. Probably a little Copper drift, a little brass drift. I'm going to grab one of those. See if I got a small one. Well, I don't have a small one, but I got a medium sized one. Let's see if I can get back there. Oh, I gotta get the wiper off. All right, I'm gonna get the wiper off and uh, I'll come back and take that off and let's see how it does. So just a quick update, it's been about uh, 30 minutes and the gib is still in. I don't know if you guys can see this, it's maybe, maybe way too dark. Um, behind each of those gib screws and locking nut is uh, yet another uh, part. It's a little pin. Um, they call it a headless screw, though it doesn't seem to be threaded at all. And uh, those are engaged into what I assume are little divots in the gib. So uh, what I've been doing, and I had some success in at least getting most of them. You guys can see that, I guess. Is I have a little shim here, and I drove it in there and sort of tapped around. I was able to get almost all of them, uh, except for one, um, you know, free of there. I, I guess they're probably tapered on the end. So I'm going to keep tapping away and banging away and squirting some penetrating fluid in there and... Uh, of course, they're brass, so I can't uh, use a magnet to get them out. And uh, I don't know, I guess worst case, I'm not sure what, maybe some compressed air or maybe a uh, maybe the shop vac. I guess if I lose it, I can always make another one. So, all right, I'm going to keep plugging away. Wish me luck. All right, well, that was rather a massive pain in the ass. Uh, it turns out these pins actually are steel. They're not brass. Um, and... Uh, through a combination of cursing and swearing and lots of PB blaster and some compressed air blown in uh, through the gib and bopping the gib back and forth with a little uh, little wedge of metal sort of trying to push those pins away. I was finally able to get the pins clear and uh, so there's there's the gib and you can see these guys uh, engage into these little holes here. So that's that. Gib looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's uh, still got some of the scraper marks on the bottom. One little uh, little burr on the bottom here I'll have to take care of. Actually, a couple on both sides. But all in all, definitely usable. Um, <clears throat> so I also made a, a small discovery when I, when I was working on that. And that is I was wondering what this pin was sticking out of the front here. And I have a feeling, well... 
No, maybe not. I thought it was in line with these Gibbs, and it might be one of the pins that was left over from somebody trying to take these out. And, but perhaps not. Perhaps that's something else. Uh, I'll have to pull a parts diagram out and take a look and see what's on that old side. In any event, the gib is totally off now. The table is loose, and much to my dismay, um, it does not, in fact, clear the dovetail to just pop right off the top. Uh, the good news is it's not nearly as heavy as I was anticipating it to be. I can definitely deal with uh, lifting that under the table. So um, now the table has to come off. So I'm going to assume that it's the same basic design. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gibs. Plus there's also a pin behind the, uh, the lock here that I'm going to have to deal with getting out. Uh, what I was using on the, on the cross slide is this little bit of shim stock and just kind of wiggling it in there and tinkering it around and moving the gib back and forth and just jostling it in general uh, till it came out. I don't have a magnet small enough to fit into that little hole there. I was using a little bit of broken off magnet end uh, that basically didn't really work. My worked best with the compressed air. <clears throat> PP blaster in the front, compressed air in the back. And so anyway, um, I'm going to start working on the table. And uh, well, actually, the table table I can probably do because I'm, I can I can slide it right off the end. I don't think I need to have the uh, the gib out to clear the dovetails, I can just run the screw all the way out and slide it right off, I think. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure. Underneath here, there's no obstruction to pull the uh, to pull it past the nut. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get everything loosened up, take the handles off, and dry the table off the end, and we'll go from there. I'm not going to film all that, uh, you know, nothing, uh, nothing super special. If I run into anything that's uh, particularly odd or unusual or, or counterintuitive, then I'll go ahead and stop and shoot a few, uh, few minutes of footage on that. All right, so back to the coal mines. All right, that wasn't too bad. So these, uh, these end caps came off. Um, on the other side, there was a bearing that was pressed onto the, uh, pressed onto the end of the lead screw. So I got my trusty uh, <clears throat> blue point 10 ton puller and uh, very gingerly pulled that off. The bearing doesn't uh, appear to be in fantastic condition. It's a little crunchy. I'm going to go ahead and soak it in some solvent and, and give it a good cleaning and re it. I think it'll be just fine. I'll probably take a look and see what a replacement bearing uh, cost and how available they are. Um, perhaps I'll replace that while I have it off. But it wasn't that big a deal to get it off. So then they wait till, till another day. So everything should be loose. The gib is loose. All the screws are removed. Um, whoop, all the screws but one are removed. I'll go ahead and drop this in the, in the, uh, in the soak. Before I lose it, now's the moment of truth. Oh, look at that. Ugh. And that is the table off. It's in pretty good condition, actually. No scoring or anything. No real rust under there. Looks Pretty excellent. Not even, not even that much schmoo for being 60 years old. All right. So the next thing to do is to go ahead and take the uh, the nut off. Let me go ahead and bring you over here and show what that looks like. Hold on, this is just a second. Okay. So to get the cross slide free, um, this is the the bolt that retains the nut. This is the nut for the uh, table longitudinal feed. I think I'll probably just go ahead and pull that off and clean it up a little bit. It feels like it's in really good shape. It's not sharp or anything. The threads in there look just perfect. So, uh, you know, a little goo in there, but uh, all in all, a lot less than I expected when I got this machine. There was a gigantic amount of chips and crud and grease impacted into the uh, the gears of the ta of the knee elevation screw, which. I guess on the one hand, they're, they're just exposed under here. There's nothing really protecting them. On the other hand, they're just exposed under there, and it's actually very, very easy to clean them out. So I'm a little surprised to see how clean it is inside here, unless somebody had this thing apart in, in fairly recent memory and, uh, and cleaned it out. Uh, you know, the edges here are a little sharp. Um, they could probably be used to hit with a stone and just kind of clean them up. But again, um, nice and smooth, no scarring, no real signs of any abnormal wear or anything. Um, machine's actually in, in, in better shape than it appeared 
uh, under all the crud and crust. So let me go ahead and, and find a, uh, a socket and we'll loosen that guy up and we'll pull this baby right off of there. Alright, so that's just a 5 8 bolt. Uh, I loosened it up and uh, the nut unceremoniously dropped out of the bottom of the knee onto the floor. And you can see here, uh, yeah, that needs a little bit of a cleaning, I would say. So I'll go ahead and wipe all the worst of that off there and drop it in the goo and clean it up. This is interesting. It's, a, it's a, actually a cast iron um, housing with a couple of brass sleeves uh, pressed in there where the threads are, it looks like. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's brass. I guess we'll find out when it's clean. So, All right, so that's that. Now this should come right off. Hmm. And it doesn't. Well, let me root around and see what's, what it's hanging up on. I'll be right back. All right, so there's the cross slide off. <clears throat> um, like a dummy, I was trying to lift it straight off, which, of course, I couldn't do. That was why I took this, the uh, table off in the first place. As soon as I grabbed it and slid it forward, it came right off of the, uh, off of the dovetail. So there's the bottom of it. A little bit rusty, but nothing, uh, nothing too drastic. A couple of chips here and there. There's the top side again, you know. There's a lot of crud in there. There's a couple of washers or a couple of spacers in there that were under the uh, <clears throat> the nut that holds the nut, or the bolt that holds the nut rather. Put those in the goo. Now I got another decision to make here. Um, I've already come this far, and if I just uh, swing around here, pardon the shakiness. I don't know if you can see in there. This is kind of the worst of it all. Actually, let me grab a... Uh, let me come a little closer. Sorry for jostling you guys around like that. And I think I got a flashlight in my pocket. So, that is just full of glop and schmoo. And I actually took a wire brush and uh, brushed a bunch of that out not too long ago. But it's just awful in there. So... You know, really, I've come this far. I think what I'm probably going to do is go ahead and swing the uh, the turret and the head out of the way and take the knee off. I think this knee is probably light enough that I can manage it, although I do have to lift it pretty high to get it off that dovetail. But, um, <clears throat> you know, at this point, it's pretty ugly in there. I've already got the, I've already got the table and everything apart. I might as well go ahead and keep going and get it nice and clean under there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Actually, maybe maybe I'm going to go ahead and do that later. I think what I'll do first is go ahead and get the slide and the table cleaned up and uh, start working on the mounting hardware for the DRO itself. And then once I get that all done, then I think I'll tackle the knee. So, all right. Well, it's better than I thought. Now, like I said, I was expecting a lot more wear and a lot more crust and dirt and, and whatnot um, on these surfaces here. And they all look pretty good. There's no uh, no signs of scraping, no flake marks or anything, but really um, pretty happy with what I got so far. All right, so let me start working on these, uh, these parts here, get them cleaned up as best I can, and we'll go from there. I'll start, uh, I'll put them down someplace flat and work on the plan for mounting the DRO hardware. So I decided, I went ahead and, and just did a, a quick cleaning in there, and I decided that I'm not going to go ahead and take the knee off. Um, I don't think it's really necessary. I can get access to the, to the dovetail in the back um, by bringing the knee all the way down, all the way back up again, and get that nice and clean. Um, I was able to get in there with just with a little compressed air and a brush and some carburetor cleaner and get that looking pretty clean in just about two minutes worth of work. So I'm going to go ahead and probably do a better cleaning inside there, but I'm not going to remove the knee. Um, again, I don't think it's really necessary at this point, and uh, that knee's pretty heavy. The whole uh, turret has to come out of the way. It's good. it's a pretty high lift. I just don't think I'm really uh, really prepared to deal with it, and I don't think at this point it's it's warranted. I'll, I probably will take the wipers off and uh, give those a good soak and a good cleaning. But beyond that, um, I think the knee is going to get uh, left alone. Other than I will obviously clean all the surfaces here for the slide stone them down, get off any uh, any burrs or high spots, a couple on the edge here, so uh, that's that. I'm working on the slide and the table right now, trying to get those all cleaned up. Uh, mostly I'm just using my uh, my magic floor stripper 
That stuff works really good for cutting the grease, spray it on, let it sit for five minutes, wipe it off, and you're good to go. And then the other thing I've been using is, uh, I've got a whole bunch of these pieces of copper scrap from a local artist who's using his, uh, his studio. I've been using those as scrapers, obviously, because they won't scratch uh, the cast iron at all. I got a lot of it. Um, I can sharpen up the edge real quick, and that's been working really well for getting any caked off or caked on grease off, rather. Um, you know, the, the worst case scenario, if you get some grease that's completely stuck and absolutely positively will not come off, uh, oven cleaner works really well, but it will, of course, take the paint off. So that's a uh, that's a last resort. So far, what I've been finding is all coming off pretty easy, and. Uh, it's been pretty satisfying getting this guy cleaned up. I wasn't really planning to do all this work on this machine right now. I was really just going to play, put the DRO on and go, but um, it'll be nice. I was looking around on YouTube for some instructions on how to get the knee off, and I came across a, uh, another YouTuber who had pictures of his closing mill, and uh, his is absolutely beautiful and pristine and shiny, and it kind of shamed me into uh, getting mine looking a little better. I'll put a link up to his channel um, in the down at the bottom of the description. So anyway, uh, scrub, scrub, scrub. All right, so definitely making progress. I got the, uh, the bottom of the table pretty well cleaned up. I got most of the cross surface. I got the bottom surface, the top surface, or the bottom surface rather, the top surface. Uh, I haven't done the ends yet. I did the front and the back. They all came out pretty good. Um, I noticed on the, on the bottom here, uh, there was a little bit of paint from somebody, obviously this machine's been repainted, and uh, there was a couple of nicks and dings along uh, one edge of the dovetail here. Actually, this one's still maybe got a tiny bit there. So I went ahead and, and, and cleaned them up real good. Um, I took a hard stone, and I just kind of went through and just lightly stoned all the surfaces. I'm not looking to take any material off just to knock off any burrs or any high spots. This is a very hard stone. It's not very really abrasive at all. And uh, that's all looking pretty good. So I still got to do the ends on the slide, the ends on the table, and then the, uh, the top surface of the table yet. And I think before I do anything, since it is a little humid here, you know, this time of year, I'm just going to go ahead and just spray a little WD on everything, or a little black PB blaster rather, just to make sure that I don't get any flash rust. Because that's always fun to take apart, and then five seconds later, you're fighting rust on there. So I'm going to flip the table over. Oh, boy. So this face of the table has got to be done. This is where the, uh, the scale is going to mount. And then I'm going to work on the top of the table. I want to get this looking a little better. It's got some scars. And when I first got this, um, I cleaned it and stoned it just to get any, any dings and high spots off. Um, I'm hoping to get it looking a little better, at least it's it's definitely serviceable. And uh, oops, once I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to drill the mounting holes for everything on the um, the R45 milling machine. Um, since I've already got this stuff off, it's not that heavy to wrench up there. And uh, rather than do it on the drill press where I might have a short table, uh, the table on my other milling machine is about the same length, maybe a little longer than this. I'll set up a couple of, uh, a couple of stop blocks, a couple of angle blocks for, for doing this setup. And that way I'll get all my holes drilled and located, and I think that'll be the, the best way to do it. So that's really it for today. Uh, thanks for sticking with me for this long. Thanks for watching. And uh, look forward for the next uh, installment. Everybody have a great night.